You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Does the Quran prophesize the end of the state of Israel? There's been a lot of commentary on social media to that effect. Many people looking at verses of the Quran and pointing out that they say that Israel will come to an end. Dr. Shabir, I want to get your perspective on this subject. Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Uh, what do you make of this argument? Um, people are looking at particular verses from Surah or chapter Isra, Dr. Shabir, and they're saying that this shows that, um, you know, the, God is prophesizing that the state of Israel will come to an end. Yeah, you're referring to the 17th chapter of the Quran, and um, some are interpreting uh, the opening verses of this uh, 17th chapter uh, to be a commentary on present day affairs. Uh, uh, I don't read it that way, and of course, the classical Islamic tradition did not read it this way. But uh, the the modern argument goes that uh, the uh, classical commentators did not know of current events naturally mm. because they lived a long time ago. But seeing the current events and then rereading the passage uh, that 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 opening uh, part of this seventeenth chapter in the light of current events, one can see that things are fitting together almost like a hand in glove. Mm. So, so we need to uh, look at that argument in some detail. Uh, so uh, the, the 17th chapter of the Quran starts with the famous verse uh, that is cited uh, on, on uh, pulpits uh, around the time of uh, uh, the anniversary of the Prophet's ascension into, into heaven, the occasion mm -hmm. known as the Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, uh, from which this title, this surah gets its uh, title, Surat Isra. It's also called Surat Bani Israel because right after that verse, uh, there is a mention of the Bani Israel, and uh, God says, we have written in the scripture, which is probably a reference to the heavenly tablet uh, f uh, for the people of Israel, uh, that you are going to cause corruption in the land twice. And uh, when the first of these occasions uh, arose, uh, we sent against you uh, servants of ours who had might, and uh, they penetrated something like Khilal al-Diyar, could be like amidst all of the dwellings. Uh, so the, there is an in, uh, I, there is a sense here of an invasion mm -hmm. uh, that occurred. And then uh, the, the passage goes on to say, then we gave you a chance like to come back at this and we supported you by uh, uh, multiplying you in terms of uh, of wealth and and sons and uh, you know we made you like aksara nefira which means something like uh, we gave you like a a, a large uh, contingent a large force uh, more more than than the opponents. I, I know it sounds disjointed because it's like this in the Arabic, and we'll come back to that. Like w w like how do we fill this this uh, apparent gap or a blank? But uh, basically, it says literally when the when the second occasion arose, فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَوَادُ الْأَخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ so that uh, they would disfigure our faces, something to this effect. And so that uh, they would enter uh, the place of worship uh, as they entered it uh, the first time. And so that they would destroy everything that they come upon. Uh, so now the disjunction, and this is where uh, like a key part of the argument comes in. Mm. Uh, you, you see, when it says so that they would, it seems to be future tense, right? Mm. They, they would do this. Uh, but uh, we, uh, you know, I would say that, uh, yes, it is future tense in a way, but, uh, but that does not clinch the, the, the argument for what others are saying. Uh, because, yes, it was futuristic from the point of view of when this was declared for the people of Israel. So God wrote this to the people of Israel, like, this is what is going to happen. You're going to commit uh, oppression or corruption in the land twice. And, uh, you know, the first occasion comes, this is what's going to happen. The second occasion comes, this is what's going to happen. Uh, and uh, so this is the second occasion. from, from So it's future from the time when this was declared. 
but not necessarily future from the time that the Quran itself is declaring it. Hmm. So it's future from the time it was declared for the first time uh, in the scripture, which is probably the mother book. Or uh, if we say the time when Musa or Moses, peace be upon him, declares this to the Israelites, this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to corrupt, cause corruption twice and you, your temple is going to be destroyed twice. Uh, so uh, the, the classical commentator said that uh, this uh, um, is a reference, first of all, uh, to uh, the, like the first occasion would have been when the temple was destroyed in the year 586 BC, uh, when uh, the Israelites were sent in captivity into Babylon. And the second destruction is uh, uh, in, in uh, the first century of our common era, around the year 66 to 70, when uh, the temple was destroyed and the only thing that remained uh, was that uh, you know the the western wall uh, of the Temple Mount? Uh, so so this is all past history from the point of view of the Quran. But I want to come back to that blank where uh, the 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 seventh verse of that chapter uh, says, and uh, I was r reciting words by you know in in part. So فَإِذَا جَاءَ عَوَادُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وَجُوهَكُمْ when the second uh, occasion arose, so that they would do bad to your faces. It could be that, you know, they would cause uh, your your faces to be, you know, to turn sour in a, mm. in a way, like you, you won't like what, what, what you're going to see then. Uh, okay, but, but there is a blank. When the second occasion occurs for them to do this, in the Arabic actually, uh, something has to be filled in here to give the, uh, the, the fuller meaning. Uh, the Arabic construction is what we would refer to as uh, Jumla Shartuya. It, it is a conditional sentence. And a conditional sentence, just as in English, it, it, it composes of an if clause and a then clause. Uh, so, you know, if you do this, then this will happen. So in the Arabic, uh, the conditional is uh, uh, So when the second occasion arises, or we can, uh, to, to give it the sense of the conditional, uh, if and when the second occasion uh, arises, uh, uh, you know, then what will happen? And in the first instance, it says, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَادُ أُولَهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ When the first occasion arose, we sent. So now this is complete. Uh, when that happened, we did this. Uh, so uh, the second occasion now, um, the, the, the we did this is, is not mentioned. What mm. did we do? So to fill that in, Ar-Razi says in his tafsir, Ar-Razi is one of the giant commentators of tafsir, uh, of commentary on the Quran. So he said that uh, this means uh, almost the same, like uh, we, uh, we sent against you. As, as was in the first instance. And it's not mentioned in the second instance because this is understood. So, so now this completes the meaning. Now, even if you say that this is going to be in the future from the time it was spoken, we are going to send against you, in, you know, our forces in order to do this and this, uh, then it still is futuristic from the time it was first declared. So it doesn't mean that it's referring to our current era. Uh, it could still be in our past but future from the time it was first uh, declared now what what i find to be um against uh, this uh, modern interpretation uh, is the um, likening of uh, modern muslims to the ones who originally destroyed the temple like in 586 mm. bc because it, it would make modern muslims the ones who uh, you know uh, they would well you tabiru ma'ala tatbira they would destroy everything they come upon completely um uh, so Muslims are not destroyers like this. Muslims are not invaders like, you know, the um, people who first uh, invaded the temple and destroyed it in the year 586 uh, BC. Uh, so uh, I, I can see where that modern interpretation is coming from. It's coming from uh, a, a place that says, okay, you know, we're in a desperate situation here. It looks like we have no hope, but let's let's find some hope. Yes, and, and, and we find to the some, Quran. Yeah, Yes, we turn to the Quran, we find some hope. Uh, plus, there is this uh, sense of trying to link the uh, statements in, in, a, in, a, in a classical book with what is happening now. And, and we've seen this with people trying to link 
uh, Bible statements with modern events and saying, okay, this was prophesied a long time ago. And there is scope for that because if God is the one who revealed uh, the scriptures, then God knows everything. He knows the future. And maybe in some oblique way, he is speaking about the future. That, the, the only, that's the only thing we can say about this, that uh, perhaps uh, the, the, you know, history op operates in cycles and uh, we can learn a lesson from what has happened in the past uh, and apply that to our present. We can say, okay, uh, in general, the Quran uh, speaks about uh, people um, misusing their power and then God brings them to account. Mm -hmm. And often, you know, God cuts them down to size even in this, in this world. Uh, so we can say yes, in a, in a way, indirectly, just as all of the great powers in the past that uh, were misused and God uh, reduced the, those powers in a similar way, everyone needs to be aware, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, whether Jew, Christian or Muslim, we have to be aware that if we misuse the power and might that God gives, us, then God can take away that might and give it to somebody else who might actually come back uh, to harm us. So uh, only in an indirect way, uh, and, and God knows best. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a sadaqa jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.